welcome to the Insomnia Project, the holiday episodes. I hope you've been enjoying them thus far. Thank you for everyone who's reached out. We do uh, get your messages and we do appreciate them, of course. I'm your host, host Marco Timpano, and joining me is Amanda. Hopefully I'm close enough to the microphone, am I? You are. I just Ooh. dropped my mic. I just what dropped was that? That was my pen dropping, of course. I liked that sound. Did you? Clickety. Clickety clack. That's my pen dropping. Amanda, hmm. I wanted to start today saying we're more than halfway through. We're, we're reaching the end of the holiday episodes. Have you had fun? Yeah, I have had fun. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a neat little journey, journey a little journal yes. in a way for us. One of our listeners said it was like an advent calendar. <laughs> Mountain Goat One <laughs> tweeted us and said they really enjoyed the episode. That's my, me kicking the pen. Um, there's a lot of pen There's so many pens around today. me. Um, and they said that they were going to listen to bit. They were going to watch Big Night based on oh, our recommendations. Yeah, so that's it's such a great, great uh, movie. Do, we were talking about books too, books to read. Yesterday's episode was with Linda, where we talked mm. about literature. And there's been episodes throughout from the past, and you're going to be hearing one coming up just after Christmas with Nima. And I, I got a message from Nima where he said, "Oh, you know, you did the Winter Solstice episode." And there is a celebration that Persians do oh. for winter solstice where they they eat nuts and various fruit and drink wine and read poetry. It sounded so beautiful. Oh, that sounds beautiful. And Remember, Marco, we were in the Middle East this time two years ago. Oh, was it this time? Well, we had just come back, I oh. suppose. But remember how beautiful that was? It was so God, gorgeous. It's, it's so beautiful there, this time. I mean, probably always, but this time of year, there was a real magic to the three countries we went to. Now, that said, Nima will be back in March, and we'll talk about Persian New Year because he was mm. telling me all about the wonderful celebrations around the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll get him to talk about that. But you'll hear in a past episode that I did around the holidays with Nima coming up. And we gave our book recommendations to Linda in Getting Lit with Linda. So if anyone wants to listen to some beautiful book talk or book recommendations, you can go there too. For sure. For sure. That's a podcast that I produce mm -hmm. as well. So Amanda, before we go further, I want to thank everyone who listens because I mentioned that I will mention certain places, but mm -hmm. I figured I'd take this time to go through all the countries that lis have listened to us in the last 30 days and send a special thank Do you out to them. Do we have time to talk about each country? I don't think we have time to talk about fun. each country, but you can give me a quick hit. Oh, gosh. Uh, if you want, if, sure. if it comes to mind, okay? Yeah. We'll okay. just be, we'll just be um, what's, concise with it Yeah. as, be as best we can. Because if we spend a minute on each, that would be 60 minutes. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, but I'm very grateful to all our listeners, to everyone who's reached out, and to those who don't because they're falling asleep mm -hmm. or they're just listening to relax and they don't want to... They don't want to do anything more than, than that, and I appreciate that. I'm that listener sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I, I definitely reach out about random things, but sometimes I just like to be a fly on the wall. There you go. For all you flies on the walls or bugs in the bed or— Oh, gosh. Well, oh, yeah, I guess birds in the trees, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you. I'm going to start. I'm going to just go down the list of countries that okay. listen. So Canada, of course, is All right. our what base. What should we say about Canada? Um, we have a lot of listeners. Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Ottawa, Vancouver, Edmonton, Welland, Winnipeg, v Victoria, Saskatoon, Burlington, oh Oakville, Halifax, London, Vernon, Fort McMurray, Great, Greater Sudbury. So not just Sudbury, Greater Sudbury. The Greater Sudbury, Sudbury area. Yeah, Kingston, Mississauga, Regina, Barrie, North Vancouver, Hamilton, Kitchener, Spruce Grove, Lethbridge. Port uh, Coquillum. I know I'm saying that wrong. Coquillum. Coquillum. Isn't it? Uh, I love it. It's so beautiful there, too. And I hate to say it wrong, and I don't know I said it wrong. Scarborough, Moncton, Brampton, My people. Sylvan Lake, Sherwood Park, Gatineau. We were in Gatineau not mm. too long ago. Ajax, Sherbrooke, Dartmouth, Surrey, Guelph, Fort Erie, Whistler. And the list goes on and on, Amanda. I have a New Year's resolution that mm -hmm. I would like to go to Saskatchewan. Oh, I love it. I, we've never been. No, we haven't. And neither one of us have, has ever been. I think it's the only province we've never been to. And we've never been to, or I've never been in the territories, have you? Neither have I. And I would love to go. And I had a friend who's been in Whitehorse. No, he's been in Yellowknife. And he's, I always Oof. get them mixed up. And he's moving to Whitehorse. So he's going from the Yukon to the Northwest Territories. No, from the Northwest Territories oh, to the Yukon. I know. It's always, anyway, it doesn't matter. But he's, he's moving. And so... 
um, I would like to see him in the Yukon. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, next up is the United States, Amanda, your homeland. Wow. And I've been to 46 of the 50 states. So I've got four more to go, and they are New Mexico, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. And I want to accompany you to those places. Maybe I'll get to one of them this year. That'd be awesome. Alexandria, Chicago, Van, Van, Nuys, Van Nuys, right? Van Nuys. That's California. California yeah. yeah. Fort Dodge, Philadelphia. Oh my gosh, you're going to go through everywhere in the no, States. No, North Tonawanda, Cleveland, Min- Minneapolis. Tonawanda. It just goes on and That's on and on. <laughs> we get their commercials. Yeah, we get we get North a lot of... North Tonawanda, Chictawaga. We get a lot of commercials here in Toronto from our friends in uh, Buffalo and upstate, upstate New York. Upstate New York, yeah. Which I love that area. I know, it's beautiful. And Buffalo is such a beautiful... A uh, place to go visit. Architecturally speaking, it has all that kind of Art Deco kind of look to it. I, I, we, we, We're spending a lot of time in North America. Okay. That's like a solid five. And we've got, uh, what did you say, 28 more countries? Today? Yeah. And listen, thank you for keeping me on time with that. The United <laughs> Kingdom, of course. Mad love on Mad this love. program for the United Kingdom. We watch all your shows. We often fall asleep to them, and we're grateful for them. I'm shooting another uh, season of A Gay Victorian Affair, which is me in my my best, maybe worst, British accent. You can check that out. That's all that lives online. And uh, we're shooting another season in March, so that's going to be my homage to, uh, to England. And uh, I have to say, when I was learning my lines for it, uh, my phone switched over to British, and to this day, it's still British. Meaning anytime Siri or anyone speaks to you back from the phone, it's... It's, it's with, British, yeah. yeah. It just turned over because it heard British talking and it just stayed that way. And Because uh, you were rehearsing. Rehearsing lines. I had recorded a man, a British man, saying my lines so I could make sure that my... But I didn't want him to give any inflection because I didn't want it to be like me just uh, being a parrot. Right. So I just wanted to make sure that the, the accent was right for that region. But anyway, it turned my phone British and to this day I have to ask to turn the torch on and off. <laughs> Instead of the flashlight? flashlight? It won't recognize flashlight? No. I, I don't think so. I like turn on torch and it turns it on. Oh, that's great. Anyway. A couple of cities. I'll just mention a couple of places where people listen. Melrose, Swindon, Southend-on-Sea, Harrow or Harrow, Basingstoke, <laughs> Golden Green, Bristol, Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Stockport. Edinburgh? Edin- Edinburgh, Scotland. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I said the first time. No, you said Edinburgh and then Edinburgh. Ed- well, anyway. All those places. Lots of places. Stockport, Ed, 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 Edgware, or Edgware okay. Ipswich. There's an Ipswich in Massachusetts. Everywhere that you've said, there's probably a version both in Massachusetts and then when the Loyalists got kicked out, also in the Maritimes. Islington? Yeah. Exeter? That all. And there's Islington as a popular area here. Yeovil. Okay. Birmingham. All right. So there's plenty of places. We know Winchester I just saw as I was scrolling. Yeah. Okay. We spent spent a good deal of time in Winchester. Yeah. And Bewley, which looks like Beaulieu, but it's Bewley. India. Uh, So you've been. I haven't. Love India. Oh, I would love to take you to India. Can we go? I like the idea of taking me. It's so like chivalrous. (laughs) Please take me to India. Australia, you've been. I've I haven't. been. You haven't. I oh, weren't you there it. for around Christmas time? I was. I left there on uh, Christmas Eve, 1998. I had the longest flight of my life, and I uh, spent the morning in Bondi Beach. I love speaking to Australians about travel because for them, it's always a long, long mm-hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. And so when it's like seven or eight hours, and it's like, oh, it's, it was only seven. It was just or, about seven hours. Yeah, it was, yeah. It took a, it was no it's time. It's 24 off. hours. Yeah. <laughs> My They're, awful Australian accent. I think Australians are perhaps the best travelers because of that. Yeah, they, they're a hearty bunch. Yeah. Very proud. Yeah. Much more patriotic than I realized when I went down there. Everything was like, by blue. By blue. Yeah. Oh, that's by Aussie. Yeah. By Aussie. Oh, mm-hmm. that's great. I love Australians and Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. I love Melbourne. Elfin. What a beautiful city. I love Sydney too, but Melbourne is a beautiful city. Adelaide, Perth. Haven't been up there. Mooney Ponds, uh, Doncaster East. Oh, wow. Why aren't they listening to us in Doncaster West is the big question. There I may have. not be one. Fair enough. Belgium is the next country that listens. I haven't been and you've been. I have been to Belgium, yes. Uh, Brussels, Bruxelles. Uh, really, really clean, beautiful, charming town, uh, the seat of the European um, EU. 
Oh, is it? Is in Belgium, I don't know. yeah. I'm I'm really would like to go there. Oh, uh, there's a and there's eat a, and drink. There was a movie called In Bruges. It has nothing to do with Belgium other than I guess it takes place there. But somebody <laughs> okay. just put on Facebook that it's such a great movie. Oh really? And we're going to do so we have friends who will a couple who will curate movies for each other. And we're gonna yes, do that, right? Program. Yeah, so they're like tonight's programming is this and they give a little like film f- Festival. Uh, there are friends at Highball TV, which right. is an amazing streaming service. If you'd like to check them out of independent film and cinema, but uh, anyway, they they program for each other, so they're not allowed to. So they don't spend thirty minutes flipping channels or between streaming services. Going, I don't know, what are you in the mood for? What are you in the mood for? They just say tonight is your programming night, and they present it like it's a film festival and say this is what I love about this movie. This is why I've programmed it for tonight and then they're both committed to watching it. Isn't that lovely? It's wonderful. Don't be surprised if In Bruges ends up on my programming list for us. We're going to do that once a month, I think, yeah. you and I. I think Friday, the first the first day of each month. Oh, so great. And we might do it with them, too. Saudi Arabia. Neither one of us have been, but we've both flown over it. And we both said, after having been in the Middle East, we want to see more of the Middle East and Saudi Arabia is on that list. Mm-hmm. R- Riyadh, Dammam, Jeddah are the places where people listen. From there now, now the city's the city list is getting smaller, so I can okay. The Netherlands or Holland. I have never been. I have. I found out I am part of my ancestry is from the Netherlands. I love love way back. We you've been okay. One of my dreams would be to go cycling with you in Holland. Let's do it. I know you say I can't cycle, but I believe I, I'll make it work. Great. Well, listen, we can we can train and prep you because Amanda's never really been on a bicycle. Mm-hmm. But Holland is very flat. Mm-hmm. And if there's a place where you want to go cycling, the Netherlands would be it. Because not only is it flat, but it's a very – it's a culture of cycling. I would like to go to Amsterdam and spend some time in Amsterdam. For some reason with Dale, I keep thinking Dale and I are going to go. Well, I guess I got cut out of that equation. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I didn't know you wanted to go. You've never expressed this until this moment. So I'll have oh, to readjust my dreams. I love I love the Netherlands. The next place, and I really want to go here. I'm like, look, I'm going to say that for every every country yeah, that are. we have. Yeah. So I'm just going to stop saying that. But Ireland has been a dream oh, of yeah. mine. Yeah, and neither one of us have gone. And so much of my ancestry is from Ireland. Uh, more and more as I learn. And I would like to go. Any of these places? Cloney, Dublin. I'm going to say this wrong. Po- Port Portiosi, Kinsale, Killerglen, Nass, Bray, Kidar, any of those places? Uh, uh, Waterford, okay. Clare, I think uh, Limerick, and definitely, um, what's the one everyone's from? Cork. Cork, I see. Yeah, okay. all that area. I mean, the people that immigrated over uh, back when uh, potatoes and so on. Yeah. Speaking of green, hmm. we have our tree up. Yes, we we do. haven't decorated it yet. No, we haven't. We've never gone We're this late. We're getting on to the season. <laughs> We've never gone this late with decorating our tree. But some people get their tree on Christmas or yeah. just days before. Absolutely. And they, so, We're doing it tonight. I don't care. We're doing it. And we're going to love it. We're going to drink. We have eggnog. (gasps) We have eggnog. We'll drink eggnog and decorate our tree. And that'll be our thing that we do tonight. Mm. So it's a tree that we got from uh, from our cottage. And it is really not a perfect tree. That's why I love it. But it's perfect for us. It's got some branches that are very bare and bald. It's particularly gnarled. We got a last year was not a perfect tree, but it had a length and a grace. This year it's more of a gnarled tree. Yes. And I think it's beauty beautiful in its gnarledness. And here's the thing, that tree would have to have come come down this spring. There you go. So, so that's now we why get to enjoy it. I said to Amanda, I'm not gonna cut all the trees that we need to 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 what do you call it, call. Because mm, it's just mm-hmm. they're getting too big and when they get too big there's a fear that they might fall onto How the property. How is this about a country? Okay. Well, I'm just to say that it is a – it was coming down and that's why we cut down I that I don't trail. know where, how we got there, but anyway. Well, I don't I know. would like to continue on this journey because I, I like travel. I don't know any better segue to New Zealand than the cutting down of <laughs> the tree. We almost went to New Zealand two to... summers ago. And we will go, you and I. Danielle of Las Gallic has a love for New oh, Zealand. I'm dying to go. I mean, the thing is, we were we almost got to go, but it was going to be the quickest of trips because it was for work reasons. It didn't end up uh, lining up. It didn't end up happening. But I was really like, it might be better because I really would like to spend time in New Zealand right. versus just going, you know, 
to Christ Church or Wellington for a day or two. Both of those places on the list. Mm-hmm. And maybe we can travel with Danielle Lovelace Gallup, oh, who loves it so much. That would be so much. fun. Listen, folks, we travel a lot for work. We haven't been doing that for a while, and we really miss it. When I was in Australia, everyone said, you can tell a Kiwi... Uh, which, you know, slang for New Zealanders. I'm sure most people know this. But you can tell a Kiwi because of the word they say, the way they say the word six, S-I-X, that they say it's sex, apparently. Oh. I don't know. I thought it was beer. You could tell the difference I between an Australian's know. accent and a New Zealander's. Who knows? Turkey is next on our oh list. Oh, my God. We and we were there two years yeah. ago and fell madly in love with uh, Istanbul. And the smells, it's its like a perfume, one of the one of the perfume capitals of the world, I think, if not the. Most definitely. And it just, the the, the beautiful smells and exoticness and uh, what was the name of that area? That, Taksim. Taksim. We stayed in Taksim, right? That's right. Yeah, and it's I, beautiful. I bought a scarf for the soccer team Galatasaray. I just, <laughs> I just happened to yeah. stumble across a store that sold all, uh, you know, paraphernalia and swag for this team Galatasaray Sarai so I wear it I wore it when we were in Istanbul and people would nod and kind of give me the thumbs up and now I wear that scarf all season that's long your, that's your signature soccer team every once in a while uh, a Turkish countryman will look at me and kind of be like oh man there's someone who who, and they think I'm Turkish because I'm wearing a very specific it's very soccer specific. or football teams looks a little a bit Harry Pottery but that's one of the reasons I love it I know it kind of looks like a. I just want to say there's no better way to spend a December day yes than a Turkish coffee oh, a yes. bureka and then the afternoon spent at a Turkish bath with a uh, a woman scrubbing you raw. <laughs> I'll say this as well for our listeners. Um, one of the delights of having a Turkish coffee is you have to exercise patience. Mm. You have to let it settle. You have to just enjoy your surroundings. And and for me, that's also the spirit of this time of year. Mm-hmm. Germany is next. I've spent one day in Germany and you've spent more time than me there. Love Germany. I spent a day in Munich and went and and actually again went to a spa. That's what I did that day. I almost got a trip to Germany from Amanda if I didn't open my big mouth. Well, I might have to because Marco one year for his birthday a few years ago said all he wanted was cologne. He just wanted cologne. That's all he wanted, cologne. And I thought, wouldn't it be cheeky of me to book a trip to Cologne, Germany and and actually looked into it and like was looking at things to do there. Mamma Mia was playing there <laughs> and looked at the church and thought, you know what, that would be a beautiful place to spend like an early December kind of getaway. And then he said, oh, I've been to Cologne, Germany. It's beautiful. And I, that kind of took the air out of that. Me and my big mouth. So I didn't do it. <laughs> Maybe Se- another year. Sending our love to South Africa. That's next. On oh, our yeah. Season. And we've both never been. And yeah. we both are dying to go. I want to go to South Africa. Dale somewhere. went to South Africa. She did. I always dreamed I'd go to South Africa with Dale. Searching for Sugar Man. <laughs> Is such a great documentary. It's it's an oldie but a goodie if you haven't seen it about this Detroit singer who became really famous there. Yeah, definitely check out Searching for Sugar Man as one of a delightful documentary to watch during yeah. the uh, the holidays. Israel is next. Oh, God, love it so much. Do you remember the hostel we stayed at there? It was called Son of a Dan Son Dan of... Lewinsky's Dave Lewinsky's Son of a Brown. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That was the place we stayed. I mean, it was it was a hotel. It was a it hotel. Was, it wasn't a hostel. I no, it wasn't a hostel. It was like, a, but it was like a boutique hotel. But I'll never forget going up to the top deck. There was a hot tub on the top deck, right. and I'll never forget on a December night, being the only one up there, going up there, jumping in the hot tub, and just looking over our first night in Tel Aviv, and just looking over the lights of Tel Aviv, and just thinking, "Wow, I'm in Israel!" Like looking up at the stars. Oh, I love Israel so much. It was so great. It was a beautiful country and and a, I, I really think, I just think the Middle East is, we should all go there and, and experience it because uh, sometimes we hear about it more than we know about it. So anyway. Yeah. Love Israel. Mm-hmm. We'll go back oh, anytime. So Jerusalem, magical. beautiful. Obviously magical. I mean, to be driving and to see places that you heard about almost like you know, like Nazareth is this way and the Sea of Galilee is that way. <laughs> I, I loved how you did all the research on Israel. So I was just. I Which just, meant I Googled it on the day. No, but you were also speaking to um, Daniel's sister. Oh, yeah. I did she email g- a few people that because people go to Israel go a lot often. Right. right? And, and she, she g- goes a lot. She gave you a lot of detail. And mm. I, so Amanda had a lot of detail of where to go. And because I went to Catholic school, I had a lot of knowledge of the biblical references in 
uh, Israel. So together we made a great a true great story. Team. All those places I know about because I've heard of them in Christmas carols. Oh, I see. That's how I know those places. I really wouldn't otherwise. I don't think, but um, or art, maybe a little bit art, but sure. really more from Christmas carols. So, so they have a, like a mythical quality to me. Wonder if this place has a mythical quality for you, the Republic of Korea. Oh yeah, God, I love the R O K. I love Korea. I lived in Korea. I'm sure I've probably talked about Korea on this podcast. If I haven't, I'm doing it now. Um, Do you want me to tell you a couple was, of places that I listen? I was 20. I had just turned 22 when I went to Korea and spent a glorious year there teaching at uh, ECC, Hagwon um, English Children's Center. And uh, I lived in Incheon. I spent a ton of time in Seoul every weekend and got to go to Jeju-do, which is a beautiful, magical island. Uh, and then my sister moved there and lived there for six years. Wow. And I went and visited her and got to finally see Busan. And I love Korea a lot. What were you saying? I was going to mention the places that listen. Oh, sure, Korea. yeah. I, be- I have a theory about where. Okay. Gangam-gu. Okay. Uh, Susonggu. Guang. Uh, Guanakgu. Okay, I don't know. Um, okay, business. Seoul. Yeah, okay. And Songpagu. Okay, these are just provinces. Okay, and, well, and not, not just provinces, but like areas. Well, that's where I was listening. thinking it was going to be more army bases, but no, not necessarily. No. Okay. Well, there could be army bases in those areas. <laughs> yeah, but those are anyway. Okay, Seychelles. I know that you have a oh life for the Seychelles. Go. Anywhere that's an. I'm fascinated by islands. Period. I always have been. I would love to go to, like, every island country in the world. So that's definitely up there for me. Well, thank you for listening from the Seychelles, whoever's mm, there. Beautiful. Uh, the United Arab Emirates. I almost taught there after Korea. Oh. It was on the table to go teach in the UAE. Uh, and I think if it had been a few years later, I would have. Um, but uh, anyways, I didn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm, I I'm dying to go. I don't know what the correct way is to say this country. So I'll say it in both ways. I would say it as Uganda. Okay. But I think some people say Uganda as well. So. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Oh, from my God. I would well. love to go. Argentina. And I've been there. Argentina, you have been there. You yeah. spent a lot of formative time there. Around this time I was there. Oh, was it around yeah, this time? Yeah, I went for Christmas and New Year's when I was 17. Oh, you went for Christmas. For my, It was like I think I, I left just that. before my birthday. And oh. I came back just – I think I went for two or three weeks. Oh, wow. And just after – um, New Year's, I came back. And the wonderful thing was I was 16 going on 17. And so I, of course, have a love of cultures and different mm. places and languages. And so I guess because I was fairly young and I was just like, I just threw myself into learning. Yeah. And so because of that experience, I can speak a bit of Spanish. Your I Spanish spent- is quite good, always impressively good. And it's like you said, well, because I went to Argentina and I'm like, well, I went to the Dominican. That doesn't mean I can speak. Well, I, I also stayed with relatives because yeah. I have quite a few relatives there, yeah. and they didn't. Re- they few of them so spoke English, and so a few of the older relatives could speak Italian. But all right. my younger cousins, right. I either learned how to speak Spanish right. or I kept silent. And you know me, I'm not someone to keep silent. I, so. I'll say this: you probably have more family in Argentina than you have in any other place in the world. That's true. Even more than Italy. Even more than Canada. And more than Canada, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because when they immigrated from Italy after World War II, the majority of your family, of which you came from big families. Yeah, my mother's side, yeah. Your mother's, the the vast majority of your mother's side went to Argentina. She was, her her mother, your grandmother, was the the dark horse that went to Canada. And her sister, yeah. And her sister, they were the, but the rest of the family, and it, it was a big family, they all went to Argentina. It's true. And I have I have a couple of relatives in France, and France hasn't appeared yet on the list. And this was only a re- revelation to me because I just learned that about you. I thought you had a group of cousins. Like, I thought one sister went, and then I found out, like, five of them went. Yeah, so I have about 32, 38 cousins there. Yeah. We need to go to – I would like to – I'm dying to go to Argentina. I'm dying to go everywhere. But. Gorgeous. Um, Kenya. Oh, my God. I would love to you go. You were just saying we need to go to Africa. We yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go to Lagos. Yeah, I would love to go to Kenya. So we, we and Nigeria. I just mentioned this because we watched. I know this. they're not close, by the way, but I, those are two countries in Africa I'm dying to go to. We mentioned this just yesterday because we watch a program called Shetland, mm-hmm. and they often go to Norway. They do, and so we're like, if we go to Shetland, we have to go to Norway to Bergen. Yeah. So that's that's. Let's see. If Shetland Ber- is on there for sure. Yeah. Now but, that we've watched the show, so and no- we know everyone that lives there because we've watched the show. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, but almost. Norway 
is also we have listeners. Is that the next that, one? Yeah, that Norway's. Yeah, I'd it. love to go to Oslo. I'd love to go to Norway. I I, I love Norse and Nor and Norse culture. So, and oh, Denmark. The same. Cayman Islands. I have been. You haven't been, right? No, I haven't. I have. Baha I, I used to dock in Cayman Islands. The Pink House was my favorite little thing. The Caymans. I've been to the Bahamas with you. We built yes. That's we both spent lots of time in the Bahamas. Yeah, France. I lived in France. Well, I lived in Monaco. Close enough. I, I have friends. I have cousins. I you have spent cousins. a lot of time in. I France, love France. Too. Yeah, we both spent a lot of time in France. I now I think we're we're not giving the rest of these countries their due. Well, we're getting to to the end of our show, so I'm just going to no. I'm, maybe maybe this is a two parter. No, no. I'm gonna, I just want to be no. It's I not fair to all the people at the end of the alphabet. And your last name is Timpano, and you should know this. We're only on F. This isn't the alphabetical, Amanda. This oh. is. Listeners, how many listeners? So the oh, top countries are where we have the most oh, listeners. Oh no, I'm getting music down. It's like the Academy down? Awards. I've got to. I've got to. I finish. wanted to talk about France, <laughs> Taiwan, Indonesia, Spain, no, Guatemala. No, this is not. We're doing this another day. Romania. These are all countries I've lived in or had fun in. Hong Kong, Cambodia, Iran, no, Iran, no. Mexico, Egypt. No, Japan, we're doing another episode. Honduras, Monaco, Costa Rica, Oman. I want to thank you all for listening. Switzerland, Philippines, Russia, Czech Republic. Stay Greece. tuned. We're doing another version of this. Look how far down the list Italy comes. This is where I, none I, of your people listening. No, I have some people listening. Well, we've uh, established your people Milan. are really in Argentina. Oh my goodness, China, Sweden. Thank you everyone, Azerbaijan, Finland, everyone who listens to our program. We really appreciate it. Singapore, Bosnia, uh, Herzegovina, Ch Chile, Hungary, Jordan, Malaysia. I, however you celebrate the season or the holidays, we wish you the best. <laughs> <laughs>